With these words, I part with Jamgon, who leaves for Tibet early the next morning. So the last days before Rinpoche left Rumtek, he was tremendously busy. He was always busy seeing people, but these last days even more so. And when I talked to them afterwards, they said that he had given them uh, work to do and practices. He'd laid out all of these for, for years, three or four years of, of work and practice for many of his uh, old students. And also many of us had uh, dreams uh, several days before he left. I myself had a dream that he was leaving and not coming back. On the long journey from Rumtek Monastery in Sikkim to the airport in India, Jamgon makes a stopover to visit his mother in Kalimpong. On 23rd, he came down from Rumtek. No? As I saw him, I told him, I said, you are not looking the same today. He's, he said, I said, you are looking very depressed, you know. It's on 24th, whole day he took rest. Whole day. That is very unusual, very, very unusual. Here, here. He spends the next night before his flight to Tibet in this hotel near the airport. With him are his driver, Norbu, his master of ceremonies, Lama Kunga, and his young assistant, Tenzin. When he wake up, when Rinpoche woke up in the morning, he called me to his room. He called me by my nickname, which he only uses when he's very, very confidential. He said, do you know that I always pray for you to be well? And then he blessed me. I didn't understand why he was doing this so early in the morning. I just thought he's blessing me. Nothing more. When Rinpoche came out in the morning and went to his car, where his driver and his companions were already sitting, he said to me, we will never see one another in this form again. Suddenly there are a few pigeons on the road. Rinpoche tells the driver, don't kill the pigeons. He tries to dodge them, but we're driving so fast that we start to skid. After that, I can't remember anything. When I regain consciousness, I am no longer in the car. I immediately look for Rinpoche. He was also thrown out of the car. He has a small wound. I take him in my arms. There he draws his last breath. Also the driver and Kunga are both dead. Jamgon Rinpoche lay here. The reconstruction of the accident shows that due to an unchecked impact with the tree at 120 miles per hour, Tenzin was catapulted through the broken rear window from his closed seat belt in the back seat, somersaulted in the air, and landed unharmed on the grass on both legs where he suddenly regained consciousness and tended to Jamgon Rinpoche. <laughs> <laughs> 